Okay, everyone, you should be on your Chapter 11 notes, Chapter 11.3, Ideal Gas Law and Gas Stoichiometry. In front of you, you should also have homework sets 11-4 and 5. It's a front and back. All right, here we go. Let's practice with these bell work problems. How many moles of water will be formed if 34 grams of ammonia react? Start thinking. Given a known solution. Plot it out with a T-chart. Pause the video now. I'm going to set it up and play. Okay, so here's your setup. We're going grams of ammonia to moles of ammonia to moles of water. So how many grams are in one mole? Get your green sheet, add up nitrogen and three hydrogens. You'll find it's 17.04, I believe. And then mole to mole ratio, look at the equation. How many moles of water? Six. How many of ammonia? Four. Multiply and divide. You should get roughly three moles roughly three moles. I'm out of space. Okay, try the next one. Think back to what we did last class. How many grams, or sorry, one mole equals 22.4 liters of any gas. Try it. Okay, we're going to convert. How many grams are in one mole? Because I've got to get to moles before I can get to liters. 32. 32 grams because it's O2, not just oxygen. And then every one mole of gas has 22.4 liters. Multiply and divide. Hopefully you got 52.8. 52.8 liters of oxygen. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to the ideal gas law now that you're warmed up. Okay. So here's the ideal gas law. Notice it looks much like before. There's Boyle's part. And if I bring my T over, that's the combined gas part. But we're adding two new numbers. If I give you moles, that's N. N equals moles. It's the amount of the substance. And R is a number that comes along with it. It's called the ideal gas law or universal gas constant. Now, this is all because one mole relates to 22.4 liters. If I moved moles over to the left, I'd be dividing. So it's a direct relationship. Now, just keep in mind, this is the biggest part. Watch. These units right here dictate that you can use the ideal gas law. All volumes must be in liters. All pressures must be in atmospheres. All temperatures always have to be in Kelvin, but just to be clear. And your amount of substance, N, must be in moles, not grams. If you're stuck with something else, which on your homework you are, Get all of these, these uh, measurements to these units. Okay, guys, these problems that you're looking at right now are at the very back of this um, set of notes. They're at the very bottom, sample problems one and two. So I'm going to do number one. I want you to try to plug that information in. Okay, remember it's got to be liters and atmospheres. You, your amount has to be moles and your temperature has to be Kelvin. Okay, set it up. So look how I have this set up. I've got everything except for my pressure because R is always the same number. R is always 0 0.0821 and that is on the back of your green sheet. You don't have to memorize that. We're going to plug all this in to PV equals NRT. I'm going to clear this off so I can do that. So make sure you have this written down. Pause if you have to. So here's my basic equation. Now to get P by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 10. Oops, 10.0. Type in that entire numerator and divide it by 10. Hopefully you found pressure equals 1.16, and that would be atmospheres. Those are the units we have to be in, thanks to our gas constant. Good work. Now I'm going to clear this off, and I'm going to try number 2. So look here. I'm asked to find the mass. So first I'm going to have to find the moles and then change it to grams. But look at my volume. It's in milliliters. Well, for those of you who don't remember, there are 1,000 milliliters in every one liter. So you're dividing this number by 1,000. And you should get 0.265 liters. Look at your pressure. That's millimeters of mercury. But I need atmospheres. 
So there are 760 millimeters of mercury. This is what we did in 11-1 per atmosphere. Divide by 760. You should get 0.954 atmospheres. Your Celsius has to go to Kelvin. Add 273. 300 Kelvin. Now we can plug it into the equation. I'm going to clear all this out, so make sure you have this written down. Okay, so here's everything set up. Now I'm going to divide both sides by what's over here on the right. So it should look like this. It should look like this because I want N all by itself. Type this in. Remember, do the top first, then divide by the product of the bottom. You guys really need to get good at using that calculator. Hopefully you got what I got, 0.0261 moles. And then we've got to switch that back to grams. So I'm going to clear this off yet again, and I'm going to take moles to grams and find my molar mass. So you set it up like this, so your moles will cancel. I added up my N and my H3, and you should come up with, when you do your math, 0 0.44, wow, 0.445 grams of NH3. Alright guys, that is how you do the ideal gas law, okay? Now, be careful of what they're asking for versus what you have. So, let's go back to volumes and how this relates to stoichiometry again. Now, remember Gay-Lussac. He was the one who worked with pressure and temperature. He also worked with volumes of gases, and he found that when gases react, they do so in simple and definite volume proportions. So, basically... I'll put the equation up here, but you'll see the coefficients are now a little more than they were before. So you'll see in this equation that it's not just one mole of hydrogen and one, or sorry, two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, and two moles of water anymore. These can be considered volume numbers, ratios, sorry, the one in front, not the O. They can be volume ratios. It's not how much liter-wise there really is, but volume ratios. So, watch in the next, vid uh, next clip. Here I can consider this to a mole value for ratios or a volume. Here for the <laughs> oxygen, it's shifted over a little. One mole or one volume. Two moles or two volumes. So let's go on to the next one. Make sure you have volume ratios. Look at this combustion reaction, and it wants to know how many liters of oxygen I get with this many liters of propane. Well, it's been a 1 here, and it's been multiplied by 3.350, right? So can I just take oxygen's coefficient times 0.350? Let's look. When you multiply these, you get 1.75 liters of oxygen. And I'm going to show you two more ways to do this. This is that rep recipe way. How did it go up? Well, one, to get to 0.35, we have to multiply or divide. And we found that we multiplied. So you have to do it to the next ones. Now, let me show you another way. Another way is using a T-chart and that stoichiometry flow chart I gave you. 3,50 liters of propane. Now look at that flow chart. How are we going to get from liters to liters? It's actually a lot easier than you think. I'll show you. The first way is just to think of our volumes as moles. For every 350 or 0.350 liters, for every 1 liter, I take up 5 liters of oxygen. And you just multiply like we found and you get that 1.75 liters O2. Down here at the bottom, Using Avogadro's law for molar volume in two places, liters per mole of a gas. And then using my molar ratio, I have one mole of C3H8 and five of O2 from my equation. You can see this cancels with this, and it's the same problem as the one above. We would still get 1.75 liters. So guys, here's the thing. Look at your flow chart. You're going to have to go moles to moles because they're switching between substances, okay? Just how are you getting there? Is it going to be grams?
to moles or is it going to be liters to moles? And where are you going to go at the end? Are you going to go grams of that next substance or liters? Keep that in mind. Check out this problem. We're starting at moles and I need to know liters of my next thing. So look at that flow chart. Figure it out. Where are we going to go? Moles of N2 to blah, 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 blah. Set it up. Pause the video. Hopefully you see that your solution line is your given, your 20 moles of N2. I gotta change that over to moles of my new substance. And then I gotta go to liters of my new substance. Fill in your units on the bottom. Now go find your numbers. Find your mole to mole ratio from the equation. How many liters are always in one mole of a gas? Find those two, green sheets and equations. That's what you need. Hopefully you found them. For every one mole of nitrogen, I get two moles of NH3. And every mole of a gas has 22.4 liters at STP. As long as you're at STP, that holds true, okay? Cancel units, multiply, and divide by one if you really want to. Hopefully you got 896 liters of NH3. That's a lot of liters of NH3, which is a really good thing because ammonia comes in very handy in a lot of cleaning situations and in a lot of fertilizer situations, which are big and important. Okay, look at the next problem. Give it a shot because I'm about to go solve it. So this came directly from the Tennessee EOC practice test. Check out the equation. It's a decomposition of potassium chlorate, and it wants to know what volume liters of oxygen does 20 grams of potassium chlorate produce at STP, meaning one mole equals 22.4 liters, based on the equation above. Hopefully you know we're going to go from grams of our given to moles of our given to moles of our unknown to liters of our unknown. Fill in that bottom thing with units, then we'll go back for numbers. Okay, so let's go find these numbers. At the bottom, we had to do grams to moles, figure out how many moles we got. Then we're going to do our mole bridge step, how many moles per how many moles. And then we're going to do our moles to liters. Figure out those numbers, so I'm about to fill them in. Okay, so when you add up potassium, chlorine, and three oxygens, you get 122.5 grams per mole. Then when I looked at my equations, I have two moles of potassium chlorate for every three of oxygen. And every one mole of a gas has 22.4 liters. Multiply and divide. Hopefully you found 5.48 liters of oxygen, which is A. All right, guys, your homework set is going to be 11-4 and 11-5 odd only. If you have questions, see me on VIP time. Your quiz and all the homework sets will be taken up next class period.